Hello there, and welcome aboard another episode of Rule of Waves 2 as Great Britain. Our bug, our uh, errors from the last game, or from the last episode, with uh, illegal displacement have been identified and resolved. It turns out that uh, a number of nations were building ships, uh, specifically light cruisers, that were outside the definition of light cruisers. So, for example, these Minden-class light cruisers were originally built at 10,100 tons. Uh, other ships, uh, for example... Uh, let's see, where are some good ones? Uh, the French had a few. The Cosmos were also 10,100 tons. Russia had a number of light cruisers. Not these, where were they? Um, the Vladimir was originally 10,400 tons, so I redefined that as a heavy cruiser. And various other nations had other ships that were just that little bit over the maximum allowed displacement for light cruisers. And that's not a technological limitation, that's a hard-coded limit. So unlike the carriers that I built that were above my uh, allowed tonnage limitation for the time, these were uh, flat out outside the definition of what a light cruiser is allowed to be. And so that's what was actually bringing up the errors. Uh, turns out uh, Germany built their light cruisers at about the same time that I was laying down my uh, overweight carriers. And so that's why I initially thought that uh, we were getting a lot of error messages. But uh, when you have a total of 17 light cruisers across the board that are outside the definition for light cruisers, and you get four error messages per turn per light cruiser, that adds up fast. Anyway, uh, all of the cruisers have been brought back within legal definitions, either by lightening them up a little bit, or by redefining them as light cruisers, and a suitable bug report has been submitted. So I don't think this is an easy thing for the developer to resolve. Uh, certainly nowhere's near as easy to fix as the uh, previous bugs that I have reported on. But uh, hey, the developers do listen to stuff and they do fix things. For example, the uh, aircraft identification bug that I reported uh, what was it, 20, maybe 30 episodes ago, has been resolved in the most recent patch. So uh, they do notice and they do fix things, which I think is very, very cool. All right, uh, let's actually get this show on the road now. Uh, tensions with uh, all of our major nations, Germany, France, USA, are all rising. Actually, I believe USA backed off a little bit in the last uh, episode, which was kind of surprising. Which is good news because that means we very well may be able to get our uh, refit battle cruisers and Iron Dukes out in time to uh, join in the next war. But make no mistake, war is definitely coming, and so we need to start getting ready. Let's see, if we're facing Germany again, uh, they do still have a large number of submarines. America has mostly cleared out their collection. But Germany and France, yep, they got a lot of submarines. Heck, even Russia has a decent number of them. So we definitely do need more escorts. Okay, uh, quick review. Do we have any obsolete ships? Not that I can see. I think we're doing good so far. And our budget is almost stable. Well, that's surprising. All right, well, let's move right along. Ooh, our new battleship Humungulus is easily surpassing her design speed. Fantastic! All right, and we have five Corvettes commissioned. Good. Close to mastering chemical oxygen generator. Ooh, that's fun stuff. So uh, that is a very much real thing uh, in the service. We call those oxygen candles. Uh, they're basically big uh, cylindrical candles that you burn and they release oxygen, which is fantastic if you need oxygen to breathe while you're underwater. 
Uh, the downside is uh, they are also self-oxidizing, so if you don't intend to burn them, but they catch fire anyway, you're going to have a hard time putting them out. So, uh, yes, very nice for uh, normal routine operations. Not so nice during uh, battle damage stuff. So, interesting considerations there. And, oh, what the monopulse radar. Ooh, I thought we just got a new radar technology last episode. But here we are at Search Radar 5. Nice. Close to mastering aerial depth charges. Ooh, that'll put them in, in their place. Deck launched interceptors. Cap effectiveness is raised. Wow, this has been a big turn. First of all, we have a battleship that is exceeding its design speed. And uh, then we have a whole wave of technology. Well, that's good. That might even be enough to justify building another one. A whole knot of extra speed? Hmm. Okay. Italy has finally figured out how to do radar-assisted gunnery. So, even the, uh, even poor old Italy is making technological advances. Okay, what can we do from here? Nothing more too significant here. I think we should place, let's see, carriers are looking pretty good. Yeah, can't really think of a whole lot to do there. I think we're going to spend some more money on ASW stuff. So we're gonna order another batch of Corvettes. So we want the Hearst class and we want Memling class. We're gonna do another six of each. Alrighty. And also gonna take a few months at least to uh, use this positive balance and rebuild our funding Oh, finished construction of an airbase in Baltic states. Yep, let's copy those over. That way we can start building up our uh, flying boat collections there. Alrighty, now we'll go back and we'll continue expanding those because they are fantastic. Expand that, expand that, expand that. Okay. Anything else? I think those are about good. Now we just need to seek out the ships that have been completed and put them back on reserve. So let's see, we had, who else is still in Northern Europe? Northern Europe, here we go. The last ship. Put that back in mothballs. Okay, and then there was destroyers. Or was that cruisers? I think that was cruisers. Yep, here we go. Plunk those down in reserve. And speaking of which, how many arbalists do we have? I know we had a lot. We have 45. Wow. That is a lot of destroyers. Hopefully that'll be enough for this next war. At this point, we mostly need uh, Corvettes. All right. We've ordered new ships. Construction continues on the stuff that we've got. Well, let's move right along. Next turn, six Corvettes, two destroyers. Carrier Honolulu. Ooh, what do we got here? Oh, this is a very nice looking carrier. A little bit on the small side, but all things considered, this is a very effective ship. I wonder what this feature here is supposed to represent certainly isn't a catapult. 
So those are very distinctive. Certainly isn't an elevator. That's that right there and that thing back there. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. Huh. Weird. Oh well, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Overall, this is a pretty solid design. It is fast. It has a decent collection of aircraft. And it has a pretty solid anti-aircraft complement. So, uh, yeah. Decent design. Ooh, early electronic gunnery computer. Ooh, I don't think that's what a gunnery computer looks like. I'm pretty sure that's a uh, radar fire control, but you know what? Sure, I'm fine with that. And there's that chemical oxygen generator we talked about just a little bit ago. And oh, scientists well on their way to understanding improved ASW's torpedoes. I don't particularly remember developing ASW torpedoes in the first place, but uh, yeah, I guess if we get the improved ones, then we can skip right over the uh, initial development. America has invented Torpedo Protection 1. That's interesting. I guess they now have one more option for their construction. And Italy has 6-inch dual purpose. Well, I think we already knew about that. That's why I had high, uh, high espionage on them in the first place. Okay. Well, nothing too fancy here. We'll move on again. Battleship Humungulus has finished her working up. Destroyer Opportunist commissioned. Italy wants to buy more technology. Yep, I am always fine with that. And improved ASW torpedoes. Gradual increase in national ASW capability. Unexpected advances in lighter than air. What do we got? That's not lighter than air, that's heavier than air. Aerial depth charges increases ASW value of carriers and air bases. Good. We are making it dangerous for the enemy to have submarines. Speaking of which, what is their ASW rating now? Okay, they're still rocking an ASW rating of 6. Hmm. Well, oh, so much for uh, so much for improving that ASW rating. Okay, well, whatever. I guess it'll have to do. And now that this is complete, we're gonna put her in reserve. All right, next turn. New Naval Secretary believes destroyers are important. Yeah, I concur. He wants you to build at least 20 additional s destroyers. Hmm. Do I try and do half that much? Well, the good news is we have a very fat monthly balance right now. We can totally afford that. So you know what? Of course, sir. We'll do it. Unexpected advances in ship design. Huh. All right, I guess it's time to build some more destroyers. Uh, let's see, have there been any developments that make it worthwhile designing a new destroyer? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so here's our current destroyer design. Um. Well, we don't really have a whole lot of weight savings here. Only 50 tons from the technologies we've gotten so far, which is not that significant. That's not enough for an extra knot. And I suppose we could try and plunk down some additional uh, AA guns, but ultimately I think the SAM is the most significant contribution these ships are bringing to the table. Uh, let's see, could I bump up the torpedo tubes? Oh, I could. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so more torpedoes, that's always good. Gives them quadruple launchers in place of triples, which I am quite happy with. We already have the K-guns, we already have the ASW mortar. So they already have a very good ASW rating. I don't think there's a whole lot else to change with these. 
Uh, let's see, we need a new name. Octavia, Orpheus, Orford. Hmm. Ossery. You know what? I liked the Arbalist name. That's a very distinctive change compared to previous ships, and I can tell at a glance that these ships, the Arbalist class, have missile launchers. So we're going to keep that uh, nomenclature up. I think we're going to go with the Longbow class. I think that'll do the job just fine. So we're going to save that. And we're going to develop that. And we'll start construction next month. These two are working up. We can reserve those now. All right. Next turn. Ooh, new torpedo bomber prototypes. Let's take a look. What do we got? What do we got? Ooh, there we go. That's what I like. Medium torpedo payloads. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, take a look at the rest of the stats here. We have range is mostly about equal. Speed-wise, hmm, only the Avro model is an actual improvement, and it's also the one with the biggest range and overall best base stats. Payloads look to be identical, so no significant changes there, but medium torpedo payload as opposed to heavy, that is significant. So we're going to take this new Avro design. Latest design, longbow, ready for construction. All right, and we need 20 of these things. Well, let's see, how much is this gonna cost? Eight, nine, 10 is almost 8 million. Okay. And we still have plenty more budget, so let's lay down the remaining 10. There we go. Total of 20 new destroyers, objective complete. And these are a nice minor improvement over our previous design. Uh, we should also probably start laying down another batch of ASW Corvettes. So I think we're pretty well covered on the mine sweeping. But, you know, additional ASW, that's always useful, so we'll Plunk down another six ASW Corvettes. And that about uses up all of our budget. Okay, on to our next turn. Collingwood has finished reconstruction, Imponderable finished reconstruction, and four Corvettes commissioned. New dive bomber is ready. Fantastic. Let's see. And... I think it's time for a new aircraft request. Okay, quick review. Uh, the older dive bombers are gonna get replaced with the Bolton and Paul Bisleys, which are a decent step up here. So we get, and based on the poor reliability, it's a pretty safe bet that the Warwick is just straight up obsolete. So we'll just get that right off the list. Okay. Medium bombers are looking good. We only have Two more turns until the new Horsley comes out, so we'll obsolete the Balling Brook. And fighters looking good. Flying boats looking good. Torpedo bombers pretty well covered. Do we have any other old aircraft models? Not that I can see. Honestly, I. Don't see any particular need for uh, more stuff. So I think we'll put in, let's see. That is a very nice, well, this is a very nice torpedo bomber. That is a very good step up. How does its stats compare to the dive bomber though? So the dive bomber is faster, has shorter range. <coughs> Excuse me. Dive bomber does have shorter range, so that is a uh, concern there. And yeah, it's a nice new model. 
but I think the reduced or the limited range could be an issue. So hopefully all of our engagements take place within 177 nautical miles, but you know, it's not always guaranteed. And these fighters, well, those have room for improvement too. So let's plunk down a request for a new fighter. Always room for improvement there. So let's see, fighter, our primary objective there. Hmm. We've got choices. I do want range, because that affects how long they can stay up for between uh, having to return for re refueling and reloading and all that other good stuff. So that is significant. Granted, all the fighters usually fly on light loading, so they have plenty of, of uh, range for escorting purposes, but there's also the cap considerations. And while we don't have to turn into the wind to launch cap fighters, we do have to turn into the wind to recover cap fighters. So the more time we can spend between those, the better off we are. Therefore, I think our first priority is going to be range, and I think our second priority is going to be firepower. That way we can try and knock down the tougher planes that we're going to be facing relatively quickly. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to swap those around. We're going to go with firepower first, followed by range. And those are going to be the objectives. Okay. That's pretty well set, and we'll see how things go. And where did that extra money come from? I have no idea. Let's see here. Reserve that. Gonna mothball these. Yeah, looks good. And, hmm. Reserve those ships that just finished up. And what should we do now? Do I build another humongulus? Ultimately, I don't think so. I think it's time to revisit cruiser designs. We are hands down superior in every category of capital ships. Well, except for battle cruisers. Actually, you know what? Maybe that's what we should do. Try designing a new battle cruiser. So let's take a look at that. Quick look at the auto design for battle cruiser. Well, that's a interesting design here. I don't think I like that arrangement. Because that, that doesn't give us the benefits of all forward. At least I don't think it does. And it doesn't... Yeah, that's a weird layout. Let's see. So it's got a Q turret. Midships turret. Let's see. Armor weight right now. 12,000 for the belt, 11,000 for the deck. Let's see what happens when we put that in Y after it. Let's move that back after. Okay, so I guess it was benefiting from the um, all or nothing, or the all forward armament layout. But overall, I'm not impressed with that. Not at all. So let's try... See if we can come up with another design. All right, that's looking a little bit better. Still, that is a big ship. Honestly, I'd almost like to just take the uh, I boats and uh, modernize the design. So let's see what we can do with that. So if I were to take these uh, inconsiderable class, okay, that's fine. 
So we just take the straight up I basic iBoat design and modernize it. We have just as built straight up, we have an extra two and a quarter thousand tons to work with, which is pretty good. Now I don't need a 33 knot battle cruiser, and I think there's a few other changes we can do here. So let's see. First of all, plunk down some unit machinery, crank up that torpedo defense. That's very important. Throw on an inclined belt. And let's see, anything else? So we're already rocking very good uh, secondaries with those 24 5 inch dual purpose. Overall armaments looking good, flight installations looking good. I do think that we can probably rearrange the guns on this somewhat though. So let's, uh, let's change that around, clear those off, and let's go with an A, B, Y triple setup. There we go. Looking a little bit more and more like an Iowa class here. But that is fine by me. And hey, look at that. That's almost perfect. How much is it going to cost? Wow. 30 months at 6.6 .6 million. Hmm. I don't think that is quite worth it. Sure, it's a huge step up in capability. But it's just another 16-inch gun platform without significant improvements. I mean, sure, we're gaining some SAM launchers, but eh, I'm not that impressed by it. Honestly, we might be better off just updating the uh, other two I-boats. So let's take a look at that, too. So starting with the ineluctable. So we'll do the basic rebuild, or the basic overhaul on this design too. So we're going to, uh, so yep, still got torpedo defense too, which is not great. So we're gonna bulge that and replace machinery and crank up the speed to 33. And with that, just straight up Swapping all that out, we have 736 tons left, which should be enough tonnage for some SAM launchers. So let's see about that. And specific SAM launchers we want are usually R and W. Hmm. Let's see about repositioning that catapult, because I want that V spot for the turrets. So R and V for the SAM launchers. There we go. And then, ooh, that's a little bit overweight. Oh, that's still overweight. Okay, so we can't quite pull that off having two SAM launchers. What else could I do? And I suppose I could throw on additional aircraft, but ultimately that hasn't been hugely beneficial. Is there anything else I could do to get a little bit of spare weight? Hmm. And these medium guns are not enough to make up the difference. Yeah, not particularly. Hmm. Not going to shave off secondaries. That's a bad plan. What about, what if I do reduce the number of planes? So if I go down to two aircraft, that'd work. If I do three and shave off a little bit of this stuff, that might do the trick. Yeah, that does the trick. 
Oh, hang on. Nope, nope, that doesn't, because I don't have a catapult. Um... There we go, now we've got a catapult, but that uh, puts me 18 tons over again. Uh, I suppose I could shave off a few more mediums. Two, three, four. Yeah, oh, okay, that, that actually does work. Uh, that actually works pretty well. So that gets us two SAMs, that gets us some aircraft. We're losing one aircraft, but we still overall have a pretty effective setup here. And 14 months at, five, at essentially 6 million per month is not bad. So, yeah, I think we'll do that. And that keeps it at a 30 knot cruising speed, or a 30 knot effective speed. Gains us better torpedo protection, better anti aircraft protection. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good refit, all things considered. So, 14 months at 5 million, or at 6 million, as opposed to 30 months at 6.5 million. Heavier crowded center line gun and torp. Ooh. Well, that's not good. Let's, uh. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, don't do that. Uh, okay, so we're having center line crowding issues. Man, I wish I could just put these SAMs on the broadsides. Like right here and here would be perfect. On the midships, wing turrets would be the ideal spot for them. But unfortunately, the game don't let me do that. So I guess we'll have to do that with the catapults, maybe? Let's see, could I do that? Ugh, that looks terrible. I guess I could have to do that on the midship's wing turrets. And even then, that puts me slightly overweight. Ugh. Let's see. I really don't want to have to ditch too much more off the anti-aircraft, but if that's what it takes. Yeah, there we go. A little bit less on the AA there, but we're gaining SAMs, which is a whole nother dice roll, and we still have some of each, so I think that'll work out pretty good. All right, we'll save that. And these are still very effective frontline combatants. I'm not going to commence the rebuild quite yet, though. I want to see how the indivisibles also work out. So we've got this, and we're doing the same basic thing. So start off by replace machinery. Crank that. Oh, hang on. That's what I forgot to do. I forgot to swap over to diesels. All right. Well, we're going to do that with the invincible here. So diesels. Machinery replaced. 33 knots. Bulge that sucker. And we have weight, we have spare weight. So we're going to plunk those down right now. Hang on. Clear that off. So we have spots for the turrets. V and R, there we go. Ooh, overweight. Let's drop some of these planes. And that leaves us enough weight for the midships catapults. There we go. And that gives us two planes per side. Okay, quick review. We have air capacity, four planes. We've got catapults for them. We have SAMs. We have our bulge for better torpedo protection. We have improved speed to make up for the bulge. We have diesel engines for better acceleration and lighter weight. Yeah, noticeably different. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's actually pretty impressive. I think we'll call that good. All right, save that. 
Not going to rebuild that. And let's revisit this refit. And we're going to have to reproduce that. Okay. Bulge. Machinery replace. Fuel type diesel this time. 33 knots. Okay. Yeah, look at that. More weight remaining this time around. Okay, flight installation. Clear that off. Let's add the SAMs. That was V and R. Yep, and we still have weight remaining. Perfect. Okay, and we want the midships wing catapults. And yep, we still have weight remaining. That is what I call a good design. And let's see, a little bit more on the light AA, a little bit more on the heavy AA. Yeah, we'll stick with that. Three tons spare. That way when we start sticking new radar and such on there, we'll, it'll still be pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. And that's not even all that expensive. Very, very nice. All right, save that. And now, yep, oh, design overwritten. Now I'm ready to actually begin the rebuilds on these. So one ineluctable, off to the refits. And one indivisible, off to the refits. Okay, I think that'll have to work. And then once the Iron Duke comes out of the yards, then we can start looking at new cruisers, both light cruisers and heavy cruiser designs. Actually, it's, since it's only four months away, we need time to develop the design. So let's see what we can do with these Dakars. Can we do any any uh, modifications to that. So I do like the fact that it's got the SAM launcher on there. Very effective. Uh, these are rocking oil fuel right now. Let's uh, swap that around to diesel engines. Get that weight savings. Keep in mind we only get the weight savings from diesel engines once you have turbocharged or is it supercharged diesels. That gives you a 10% weight savings over the previous engine weight. Without that technology, the diesel engines are heavier and they're only really useful at uh, long and extreme range. So now that we've got the supercharged diesels, yep, it's useful. Very, very useful. It is lighter. And uh, we're going to do that with all of our newer ships. Okay, actually, that reminds me. I forgot to check. Did these longbows get diesel engines? Nope, they did not. Would I get a weight savings from this? Yes, I would. Oh, I feel silly. I feel so dumb. And here I was all happy about the weight savings from diesel engines in my big ships, and I forgot that I could get the same benefits in the small ships in addition to the acceleration changes as well, because it's so much easier to just start up more diesel engines than it is to light a fire in a boiler, heat the boiler up, then start admitting it. Not to mention, even just lighting additional burners in an already running boiler is a fairly involved process. So yeah, those diesel engines do have a noticeable uh, benefit in terms of acceleration. And our poor destroyers will not have that. But at the very least, our new uh, light cruisers will. So let's take a look at that. So first things first, diesel engines. We get that weight savings there. What can we do with 262 tons? Well, uh, we could try bumping up our speed. Uh, nope, let's not do that. Can't afford that. That's a little bit too much weight. Uh, I do like the six inch dual purpose. That is very nice. Uh, ooh, hang on. I could throw auto loaders on those four inch guns. 
Ooh. That is interesting. I could very much throw auto loaders on those four inch guns and look how much our heavy AA factor changes. 76 up from 55. That is huge difference there. So yeah, that is fantastic. And it already has a uh, SAM launcher. So these things are just going to eat any aircraft that come nearby. Shave off one of our light AAs, and yeah, I think we're going to call that a good thing. Um, hmm. Let's see. So our previous cruisers, our previous light cruisers, were named after uh, medieval weapons. I think for this group, we should go for... Hmm. Let's see. Medieval weapons are a very fun thing to go for, but I think we're going to go with uh, firearms this time around. So let's call this... Um, hmm... What's a fun name for a firearm? It's got to be fun to say. It's got to be relatively meaningful. Hmm. You know what? Let's do that. We're going to go with Blunderbuss. Which is an appropriate name, actually, because Blunderbusses were the uh, earliest versions of a shotgun. That famous bell-shaped uh, nut, uh, barrel that blunderbusses are well known for was to help while loading a handful of shot or rocks or broken glass or whatever else came to hand while you were on horseback. You could just throw some gunpowder in there and throw some uh, handful of assorted projectiles down the barrel and it became a uh, early shotgun. Useful for uh, hunting ducks and other birds. I think that is an appropriate name for a cruiser that is this devastating to uh, aircraft. Oh man. All right, we'll do that. Save design and commence develop. Uh... Oh, that's taking a lot less time to develop than I thought. Well, design will be ready before the uh, Iron Duke is done. So I guess we're just gonna have to sit on it for a few months. But that's fine by me. All right, let's move right along to our next turn. Some more Corvettes. And we get a hold of blueprints for the American light -like cruiser. Hmm, that looks like a very old design. I wonder what they're doing on it. I guess it's just a uh, paint and patch because I'm not seeing anything significant. Oh, hang on, wait, they're going up to a three inch dual purpose secondaries. Ooh. Getting some of that AA fire on there. Ooh, and they're well on their way to understanding early SSM. Surface to surface missiles. That's going to be significant. Hmm. Battlecruiser Independence class is rumored to carry 13 inch main guns. Yeah, we're going to pass on. The blunderbuss for now. What was that American design? Where did that go? Do they not have a one of those? Messages. I know I saw it. Yeah. Ship class Battlecruiser Independence from the USA is rumored to carry 13-inch main guns. Okay. Where is this Independence class Battlecruiser? I see no Independence on the list here. Hang on. Was this a conversion? Uh, no, I don't see any independence class carriers either. Not even among the CVLs. Hmm. Well, 
That's awkward. I wonder if that was one of their sunken ships. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Battlecruiser Independence right here on the sunken ship list. And that is not correct. She actually carries 14-inch guns. So I do not trust my spies anymore. Because <laughs> that is not correct. Not in the slightest. And also not relevant, given that all ships in the class were lost in previous wars. Huh. That's weird. Okay, uh, I do believe we had a few ships finishing their reconstructions, so let's go, or finishing construction, so let's go put those back in reserve, mothballs, etc. As necessary, arbalists are all good. And then, yep, here we go, grab those. Mothballs. Okay. How's construction looking here? Doing good. Uh... I'm tempted to order more of these uh, minesweepers, but I think we're actually pretty well covered as far as those things go. They are useful to keep with the fleet, but we have two batches of them already with two more. Oh, sorry, one more, essentially. One more batch well on the way. So, hmm. Yeah, not going to worry about it. Ooh, medium bomber is ready. Fantastic. Anything else interesting here? Italy's laying down more carriers. USA is scrapping destroyers. Hmm. Let's see. Still got our fighter request in progress. We have our new more mo uh, bleh, new modern medium bomber up. Man, I cannot speak today. Okay, how long until our new uh, air bases are up? Oh, they are up. So let's expand those some more. There we go. Hmm. Saipan and Malacca. Those are both Southeast Asia, I believe. Let's see. Saipan is over here. Yeah. Yeah, nowhere's near any actual relevant action areas. What about Malacca? Where was that? Over here? Okay, there have been a number of battles fought in this general area, so Malacca may actually be worthwhile expanding. Okay, so yeah, well, I think we are going to expand Malacca as well. And let's see, air groups wise, we should probably, well, once they're done expanding a second time, that's when I'll go in and add the uh, additional air wings. I think ultimately what I want in all of my major air bases is one group of flying boats, two groups of medium bombers, and one batch of fighters. I think that should do the job pretty well. Okay, well, uh, nothing else to do right now. Let's move right along. Six more Corvettes commissioned. Ooh, more arms expenditures. This sounds like fun. I like that idea. Ooh, well on their way to understanding anti-missile jamming system. And Hawker has developed an improved model of our flying boat. Okay, let's see. What have they improved? Uh, let's see. Same, 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 same. Ooh, new firepower. Same, same, same. Hmm. Well, I guess the only thing that they've really done is... Found a way to squeeze a little extra firepower out of it, but uh, you know what? That is fine by me. I'll take it. De Havilland's company has developed a flying boat as a private venture. Are we interested? 
Let's see what they have to have one defiant. Slightly higher speed, slightly shorter range. Same firepower, better maneuverability, better toughness, and a heavier payload. Hmm. You know what? I think that heavier bomb payload is significant. 2,000 pound bombs is going to do a noticeable bit more damage than two 800 pound bombs will. And it has better penetration as well. So you know what? I'll take it. Okay, let's see. Anything else? Yep, re-equipping, re-equipping. Anything else? Not that I can see. Okay. Hang on. Where did all this extra money come from? Our Iron Duke has not finished its refit yet. And we have 10 million extra or 10 and a half million extra money per month. Well, uh, I guess it is time to revisit. Well, let's do a quick review of the uh, longbow class. Or no, not not the longbows. Uh, it was the blunderbuss class. There we go. Where we go? Be blunderbuss. Okay. Any changes? Nope. Still at zero weight remaining. Anything? Quick review. Yep, we got our SAM launcher, we got incline belt, unit machinery, good speed, diesel engines, decent torpedo defense. Why do I have submerged torpedo tubes? I have no idea. Actually, hang on, I remember what my thought process behind that was. These are useful for uh, finishing off. Oop, nope, not that. Uh, but the submerged torpedo tubes are useful for finishing off damaged ships so that I have some sort of firepower, but they're not in an exposed position where they can be shot by destroyers and other light cruisers. So hopefully they should do the job pretty good. All right. Yeah, I do think that this is a good design. I don't see any changes that we need to do to it. Plenty of ammunition, good fire control, plenty of secondaries. I think we'll call that good. And we're going to start building them. Nope, not that one. This one. And we can afford to build four of them for now. All right. And orders placed. And uh, I think we're going to have to call this episode to a close. Because we are at that time again. All right. Uh, until next time, this is Katori87, signing off.